Welcome to this short tutorial of Fluid Storm. In this tutorial, we will create a small model and run our first simulation. In Fluid Storm, we deal with hydrology, rains, catchments, pipelines, open channels, and all the structures related to stormwater management. In this tutorial model, I will create a model with one catchment and short pipeline and the rain to see how the model functions in a rain event. First, let's add a catchment. On the top level, you will find the adding tools. And this is an add catchment, add catchment tool. By clicking it, the cursor turns into crosshair and you can start adding the vertex lines for the catchment. And when you're ready, you can double click and then the catchment area will be filled with this gray coloring. The area will be calculated automatically and you can see it in the properties of the catchment. So this is 70 hectares. Now let's add some pipeline. On the top level menu there's add conduit tool, select it. And by pressing down control key while pressing left key in most, you will add a manhole and start drawing a pipeline. If you, add, if you click anywhere, the program will create a vertex for that conduit. But if you hold down the control key while pressing left mouse button, it will create a manhole and then start to continue on drawing the pipeline. So I will add a few pipes here while I'm pressing down the control key and clicking here in my map. Okay, let's put the last one in the ocean here. And when I'm ready, I will press ESC. It will cancel the drawing. And when I press ESC again, it will select the select tool. Now we have a sort pipeline and a catchment. Next, we should add some elevation difference. If we would have an elevation model, the software would automatically fetch the elevations from that elevation model. But in this demo model, I will add the elevations manually. So I will select the first manhole here and put the attribute Z for this manhole. So this is the bottom elevation of the manhole. Let's put it 12 meters. Then the last manhole I will select it and let's say that this is on the sea level so it would be zero. So the elevation is from the sea level. Now I will open the profile view to look how my pipeline profile looks. From the window, profile view window, it will open a new profile view. I will drag and drop it here down below the map view window. By selecting the first manhole and the last manhole and right clicking and find best route, the program will find the route between these manholes and draw the pipeline here in the profile view. What I would like to have is to have a constant slope between the start and the end manholes. So I will right click here on the map view and there interpolate elevations interpolate between start and end. Now I see a nice slope here throughout my pipeline. As we can see all the manholes they are these boxes here they don't have any depth at the moment. I want to put a little bit depth to those manholes so they don't overflow immediately so on the properties window there's a drop down menu of component type you can use this to modify the selection that you have so i will select junction and i will modify all the selected junctions at once by saying that they have the depth of two meters so now you see 
that the manholes here have the depth of two meters. In stormwater models, all the water that comes into the system, they need to have access to a component called outfall. Outfall is a component that allows the water to exit the model. So typically an outfall could be a treatment plant or an exit to a sea like we have here. So I will transform this junction as to an outfall by selecting it and right clicking and convert to outfall. It copies all the relevant properties from the converted component to the newly created component. Then I should add some material to my pipelines. They are in a template material that is none and they have some diameter and roughness but I would like to have more accurate ones. I will use the finished material pack, but you can use any type of material that you have from the model materials. You can look at the model specific material library. You can import this if you have it somewhere in Excel or, or some other place, but I will be using these. So let's modify my pipelines. I will just press down left key and draw a box here and select everything and modify all of my conduits at once by putting a material here, let's say um, 350 PVC pipeline. So now you can see that the diameter and roughness came from the material library. Okay, now we should add some rain, some inflow to our system. In stormwater models the inflow can be a consumer point or rain or leakage into the system um, or any combination of those. But in my simple model the only inflow will be this catchment and its rainfall. So first we will need a rain gauge component. You can have multiple rain gauges. A rain gauge is connected to catchment, so each catchment has an attribute of rain gauge. So I will select this newly added rain gauge. Then the rain gauge has a time series of the rain intensity. So we will need a time series to depict the rain in this rain gauge. So from the model menu, time series, I will create a new time series. Let's say it's called rain. And I will copy paste the time series from my Excel. So I have a 15 minute rain intensity of 10 millimeters per hour. I will just select the values, and copy and paste it here. Now I will add the time series to this rain gauge. And it's ready. And the one final thing that we should do is to connect the catchment to the uh, pipe network. I can do it manually by selecting the catchment and right clicking uh, manhole connect selected catchments here. If I turn off the background map by double clicking the name I can see this kind of um, line here connecting to the manhole. Now we should be ready for our first simulation. You can find the simulate button on the top level simulate and simulate or pressing F5. Ok, 
Okay. Let's, if you see this profile window messy like this, it's because the selection tool selects the pipes here in random order. So we can select the first manhole and the outfall, find best route, then we will see it more clearly. And we can lock the selection in the profile view window so it doesn't change when my selection changes in the map. All right. Now we are seeing some results. If you don't have this results window, you can find them under the window results. You can have as many as you like of these result windows. And this type of result window stays so your selected result in respect of time. So we are doing a dynamic simulation, so all the results are tied to time. Here I have flow, for example, and here I have runoff. So if I select the catchment, I will see the runoff here. I can lock this so it doesn't change when I change my selection. And I can select the pipes here, for example, to see the flow in the respective pipes. And for example, for the third, I could select depth for some selected manholes. Here on the top left, top menu, you see these kind of uh, arrow and record buttons. So these are tools to move in time of simulation. When I click this forward button, the time is changing here. And then you can see this slider in these graphs to depict what hour my time step is. On the profile figure, I can look at its properties and say show current head. So it will show the current head of this time step in the picture. So we can see that the water level rises in my pipe system to the level that it's actually overflowing in the first manhole. My pipeline is too small to be able to deliver the runoff from this catchment area. It's really high in the early phases of the rain. So what I would need is to have some sort of a means to delay this peak runoff from this area. We can modify these values. For example, this is looking to be a lot of like park and not that much paved area. So the attributes of this area would not be this high. For example, only 25% of the water ran to that area would be rooted, for example. But still we get a really high runoff for the first few minutes. But the catchment attributes is a whole new topic itself. And there's a lot of customization, and a lot of science behind those numbers. But this is the way that you can create them into the fluid storm and look at simple runoffs of catchment areas and how they affect your pipelines. I hope this will give you the basic tools to create your own models in Fluid Storm.